Hi, I'm Pastor Jewel Williams from Abundant Life Church of God, and I know we've been away for a while from our college online ministry and encouragement um, ministry. I um, wanted to share a couple of things with you today. First, just wanted to say starting in September, we will start back to doing our uh, Wednesday Word, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, we've been um, kind of on sabbatical. One, we were... And I've shared this before. We've been in the process of planning a new church. We're in our second year and things are going well. And then also I was in the middle of finishing up my dissertation work, which I have done. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Um, so we will be starting those things again. So not only will you begin to see again the Wednesday word, but you'll also see our Thursday time of prayer also on our YouTube channel. But today I also was coming to you because I preached a message um, about Mephibosheth and this was kind of the third in the series and um, something happened to our video on Sunday and so I wasn't able to share it. So I just want to, I'm not going to preach the whole message, but I just want to give you a recap because I really think that it was key and important um, and I just want to share that with you. I'm not going to read the whole scripture, but it's in 2 Samuel's the ninth chapter. Uh, it's about um, Mephibosheth. This is when David had asked, is there anyone left in the household of Saul who he can show kindness to for Jonathan's sake? And Ziba, the servant, came to him and said, yeah, there is Mephibosheth who is still available. And so Mephibosheth is summoned. Uh, the scripture says that in verse 5, it says the King David sent word and had him brought um, from the house of Machir, the son of Amna, from Lodibar. And so Mephibosheth was summoned by David to come to the kingdom, to come to the palace, and he did. And what David did for Mephibosheth was he placed him at the table. One of the other verses says that he treated him as though he was the king's son. And you can find that in verse 11. And so it says, so Mephibosheth ate at David's table as one of the king's sons. So he was able to be restored. Now, I preached about Mephibosheth twice. Um, but there was this, you know, I first talked about how he was summoned by King David. And I shared how he was called out of this condition of Lodibar. Um, and, and how he was summoned from Lodabar to go to Jerusalem and from this place of lack to a place of sitting at the king's table. I also talked about a little bit in one of the other messages about how he ended up um, going to Lodabar. But I did not preach about what happened in the middle. And so the message that I preached on Sunday was talking about what happened in the middle. So I want to give you a recap of that. It's one of the things that we we know is that Mephibosheth was five years old when he uh, lost his dad, uh, when, when you know, Saul, because of his disobedience to God, finds that not only does he lose his kingdom, he loses his life, his son dies. And in the process, when this news gets back, the nurse that was tending to Mephibosheth um, grabs him, she drops him, so he is now lame, so he is not able to walk, and she runs to Lodibar, and this is the place that Mephibosheth finds himself. Now, when we get to the scripture in 2 Samuel 9, theologians and some commentaries say that by this time, um, Mephibosheth is 21 years old. That's 16 years. I want you to I want you to pay attention to that. So for 16 years, he's lived in this condition that of Lodabar. And so for 16 years, he's in a, been a place of lack. So let me just give you a recap of what the word Lodabar means. Now, Lodabar is the name of the town of Manasseh, but Lodabar means without pasture or no word or meaning lack of enlightenment or stupidity. Now think about it like this. If you're in a place where you're not getting the word of God, you're not hearing what God wants for you. You don't there's no prophet, there's nothing that 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 is consistently telling you what God says. There's no word for you to read. You're without a place to eat, no pasture, no place where you can receive nutrient. Then there's not going to be any enlightenment. And guess what? You are going to be in a place of stupidity, a place of making stupid moves, uneducated moves, moves that you don't have the knowledge to know what to do and how to do why because there's been no word for you but then I also want you to understand what Mephibosheth's name means his name means one who destroys shame which possibly also means shame no more dispeller of shame shame destroyer or image breaker now what I find interesting is this here you have Mephibosheth 
for 16 years, he's lived with a name that he's not living up to. And so instead of him being one that can destroy shame, he's the one that needs shame destroyed off of him. Instead of him being one that can break wrong images or image breaker, he needs someone to break the image off of you, off of him. So for 16 years, he's the one that needs the help. And how many of us have been in this waiting time, in these dry places, in this place where we're not hearing from God, and in these places where we're not hearing a word, there's no prophet, there's nothing coming. Even if you're even if you're reading the word of God, there still just seems to be no enlightenment for you. And so here you are at this place where maybe God gave you a word, you know, just like uh, Mephibosheth's father, his natural father gave him this name. Uh, maybe God, the heavenly father, has given you a name and made a declaration over you. But you find yourself for whether it's one year or 16 years, you've been waiting for a long time and you're not seeing the manifestation of what was spoken over you. And that can seat you to a place where you can become hopeless um, and you can begin to, 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 to begin to function with your limp. Because just as Mephibosheth had you know, no use of his feet, he had to eventually figure out how to function in this place of brokenness. But I wanted to just encourage someone today that God came, Jesus came to give us life more abundantly. That means a plentiful, rich, and lavish life. I'm not just talking about stuff. Because many times people read that scripture and they think about, oh, I'm going to get all this great stuff. I'm not talking about stuff. I'm talking about in the spiritual sense. And so what I talked about on Sunday was what happened to Mephibosheth in the waiting and what happens oftentimes to us in the waiting when we're in this gap between being in a place of brokenness and getting to that Jerusalem, to that place where the king is ready to sit you at the table and give you all you need. Well, because he is in Lodabar, in this place where no refreshing, no encouragement, lack of resources, lack of word, lack of encouragement, lack of reminder of who he was, because he was in this place like sometimes we can find ourselves, he can find himself in a place of loneliness. Many people live in a state of loneliness, those that are isolated, and they don't always have to be by themselves, because sometimes people isolate themselves, but sometimes people find themselves in a place of loneliness right in the middle of friends and families and loved ones. Why? Because you are in your own loady bar. You're in its own place, and it's a spiritual place where you are feeling this lack, no resources, no encouragement, and you can find yourself just really in this place um, of difficulty. And guess what? This happens to everybody. It happens to the rich, to the poor. Um, it happens to the homeless, to the, to the struggling single mom. People are alone and sometimes feeling forgotten because they're finding themselves in their own place of Lodabar. The second point I brought out is that Lodabar was a town of forgotten people. They will, there was a loss of destiny and purpose. But the point that I want to make is everybody in Lodabar isn't there because of their own doing. Oftentimes we think, you know, you'll look at people that are in different conditions and instantly we get this kind of self-righteous attitude of see you wouldn't be this if you were doing this or if you were doing that and you're making stupid decisions well guess what if you're in Lodabar you go make stupid decisions and so instead of us beating them up for making the stupid decisions we need to begin to pray for them and 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 help them to understand why they're in the Lodabar and so the thing that I think is important is this even though uh like, for example, Mephibosheth, he wasn't in, in Lodabar because of his own doing. Um, here he was, he was five in a place of lavish and plenty, but because of other people's choices and decisions, and even those that might have been trying to do good but still dropped him, he finds himself in this condition. But this is the key point. Uh, the king summoned him, and I said that in um, in the scripture where it says David sent a word, and I love that they italicized it. It makes it really stand out. When the king sent word to uh, Mephibosheth to come out, Mephibosheth now was responsible for making the decision to come out of Lodabar. Let me explain what that means. It, it doesn't matter how you got into this place of dryness. Maybe it's because of somebody else. Maybe it's of your own doing. But the key point is you don't have to stay there. God is sending a word. The king, Jesus, is sending a word to you and he's summoning you from Lodabar. The key is will you listen? Will you let your fear, will you let other things stand in the way to keep you from coming out? So just like Mephibosheth was summoned, I believe God is summoning, 
summoning us out of these places. So it doesn't matter. You know, it wasn't your fault that you was molested. It wasn't your fault that you was raped or abused physically or verbally. It wasn't your fault that you should have been being raised by a parent, but you was raising a parent because they weren't making the right choices. Whatever the reason is you find yourself in Lodabar might not be your fault, but it is now your responsibility to hear and to come. Now, how do I know the Lord is summoning? Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, Come to me, all you who are labor, who labor and are heavy burden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So, you know, that's the summonings for you is come to me. Christ is saying, come to me. Stop trying to figure it out yourself. Stop trying to do it yourself. Come to me. When you come to me, don't be afraid of all of your bad choices because Mephibosheth might have been thinking, oh, wow, here now I'm summoned from the king. They're going to kill me. But he made a decision to go. And you and I have to make a decision to go. And the other point I want to bring out is he was broken. We know Mephibosheth was lame in his feet. And it kept him in a place where he couldn't stand on his own. He couldn't do for himself. And many times we're in these places where there's addictions, issues, whatever, that we find ourselves broken and we're just trying to function, but we're really lame in our feet. We're not able to stand in the place that God wants us to do. But again, we have to be willing to hear the call and the summons for us to come out of these conditions so that you and I don't find ourselves staying comfortable in our loaded bar. And see, one of the things that I, I appreciate about scripture, and I'm a very visual person, when the king summoned uh, Mephibosheth, I don't see where he asked for any special um, help to get out of Lodi Bar. So he had to use his own legs. He had to use his own strength to get from where he was to Jerusalem to be where the king was. And many times we've given ourselves excuses and we make excuses for ourselves. Well, you know, things have been hard for me, so I can't do this. I have to quit. I have to stop. And then we find ourselves staying in Lodi Bar. No, you have to determine in yourself, Lord, give me enough strength even to make it to, to come to you. But I'm going to take my brokenness. I'm going to get up and I'm going to come to you. I'm going to make that decision. All we need to do is make the decision to come. And then God is going to do the rest. Thank you, Jesus. So he couldn't have let bitterness or anger what have keep him complacent in Lodabar or, or barren places. But I'm asking somebody today, are you willing to let go of what has you in, in, in bondage so that you can come out? And the other point that I brought up was a lack of hope. Many times when you're in this place of lack, you can begin to lose the ability to expect. You look over and over again at the same thing. I mean, think about it. For 16 years, his, every time somebody calls his name, he knows what it means. He's reminded that he's not living up to his name. How discouraging can that be? And year after year, he's probably got to be thinking, things are not getting better. This is my all the lot that I have. And how do I know that? Because also in this scripture, when King David was telling him what he was going to give him in verse 8, it says again, Mephibosheth laid himself face down and said, what is your servant? That you would be concerned for a dead dog like me. He didn't just say he was a dog. So he wasn't just use it. He said a dead dog. What good is a dead dog? Dead, dead dog can do nothing. And so this is because the lack of hope and expectation that had built up in him. He had no expectation of any good thing coming out of him. And I can imagine it. You probably go on to church services and it's been high and the spirit's been high. And you've been hearing the speaker or the prophet or the apostle or somebody get up and say, this is your year breakthrough. This is the season. This is the season that's coming in your way. You excited and you leave. And guess what? Your season hasn't come. You, you know, your breakthrough hasn't come. It's just another year without a breakthrough. Another year that you stuck in this same season. You start to begin to think, maybe it's something wrong with me. Maybe I'm not spiritual enough. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I'm not loving God enough. Maybe it's something wrong with me. And you begin to accept the lies that are, that are being told to you in Lodabar. And you began to do like Mephibosheth did and began to believe there's nothing in you. You're useless as a dead dog. I know because I had that feeling. I'm going to be transparent and say that I felt like that, that there's nothing good in me. So I was just happy that I could do the little things that I was doing, but I couldn't see anything greater than that. I couldn't see that my name was like Mephibosheth, that I was going to be an image breaker, breaking off the wrong image of people. I was going to be a shame breaker. I couldn't see that because I was listening to what Lodibar was telling me. 
And Proverbs 13, 12 says, Hope deferreth maketh the heart sick, but when the desires come, it is a tree of life. Many of us are stuck in the first part of that verse. We're hoping for stuff. It's not coming, and it's making our heart sick. But I want to encourage somebody today. Don't give up hope. I don't care how long it seems to be taken. I don't care what it seems like. The Father, the King, is sending for you in Lodabar. He is sending for you. He, Your release is coming. Maybe it's today. Maybe it's not today. But whenever it is, there is a release coming. There is a time that he's sending for you out of your dry places, out of the season of not being able to hear him or, or to clearly receive word, out of this place of bondage, out of this place of lack, out of this place of forgottenness, out of this place where there seems to be no purpose and, and no destiny. Because you do have a destiny. God has not changed his mind on you. He has not given up on you so don't give up on him because that's is what leads to my fifth point is a wrong belief and like I just said he called himself a dead useless dog because of your condition because of the continuing reminder of lack we can get to the place where we just really feel like there's nothing good in us we begin to believe the lies of the enemy we begin to look at our situation we begin to believe that if we don't have we believe the lack we believe that there's no pasture there's no growth if we don't see anything our conditions around us begin to tell us that this is truth our feelings begin to tell us this is true our eyes begin to tell us this is truth, but the word of God does not say that that's the truth. God's promises for us have not changed. Thank you, Jesus. He is sinning for us. He has not forgotten for us. I love the fact that David at the beginning of the said, is there anybody yet that I can show um, kindness to? Is there anybody for Jonathan's sake that I can show kindness? See, God has not forgotten about you. It might feel like it. He's not forgotten about you. He is still ready to show kindness to you. He's showing kindness to you. And some of it has nothing to do with you. Some of it has to be because your grandmother was praying. He said for Jonathan's sake. See, David had a relationship with Jonathan. And because of Jonathan's sake, he's going to remember. Some of us are, are reaping the benefit of our grandmother's praying and saying, don't forget about my seed. Some of us are benefiting from our mother's praying, our father's praying, our aunts, our churches, whoever. People praying for us and saying, Lord, don't forget about them. Don't forget about those that, that are coming behind. And because God has not forgotten, he is saying, who can I bless? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because of the faithfulness of whoever it was. And so I just want us to know this. And now this is the part that really blessed me. Scripture says um, in verse 12 of 2 Samuel 9 and 12 says, Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah. That, you know, God doesn't just, scripture ain't just throwing stuff in. Where'd the son come from? Well, some people say maybe he had the son when he came, but this all seems to be in the same time period. So um, it is not impossible that this is a son that he had when he was in Lodabar. And so what the point that, that I want to share is, even with all of this going on, this dry place he in, lack of hope, he's broken, um... There's this, you know, he didn't, he not, his getting in loaded by wasn't his fault. He's in a place of forgotten people, forgotten destiny. Even in his loneliness, guess what happened? God, he still had a son. And so the point I want to share with somebody today is this. Even in the middle of your hopelessness, even in the middle of your lack, even in the midst of your wrong belief, that God has given you an inheritance to bring out of your loaded bar. Thank you, Jesus. God has given you an inheritance. He's bringing you out with a son. He's bringing you out with an inheritance. For some, some, some you know, the Lord shared me, that showed this to me. And some young woman that maybe you were in a loaded bar condition in a relationship that God never told you to go into, but you found yourself in, you didn't have a child. Now you're feeling guilty because the child is not in a relationship with the father. The father is not um, a good father. Don't let guilt keep you in Lodabar. Take that inheritance and go to Jerusalem. Take that inheritance, that child, those children. Take that dream and go to, uh, to, to Jerusalem, to the presence of God. Sit at his table and him feed you. And when he feeds you, you feed your children. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever you, whatever your condition was, whatever you were at in that place of Lodabar,
Take your inheritance and go. And don't try to bring nothing out of load. Leave all the baggage there. Leave all the stuff there. You just come because you don't even want to send a load of our on you. Let go of relationships because too many of us trying to hold on. If your friend don't want to go, say bye bye. Leave. You come out of load of bar. You come out of that condition of black because sometimes people are trying to keep you there. You move forward so that you can go in and be who God has called you to be. So God is bringing you to the place where you can be honored, where you can be respected. He's bringing you to the place where you will have a reputation. The name that he gave you, the person he called you to be, he wants to bring you to that place where you seated at the table with him and you can sup with him. And you can, and he prepares the table before you in the presence of your enemies. So he is calling you to that place. Might not feel like it right now, but, but what I want to tell you is... Even in your waiting, know that God has not forgotten about you. So that's just like a, a little bit of recap of what the message was. Because the initial message was, you've been dropped, but I've got you. See, you might have been dropped, but God still got you. He has not forgotten about you. He's going to take care of you. And even if you find yourself in the waiting for your 5, 10, 15, whatever your time you've been waiting, do not give up hope. Know that God has not forgotten about you. So I just want to pray for you. I'm going I'm to let you go and just remind you again. We will start back to our Wednesday words starting in September, which um, the first message will be September 6th. Uh, we're going to still continue to try to share our Sunday messages with you as well. And we will also begin our prayer again. You can find all of that on our YouTube channel. And who knows, um, the Lord may have us using a little bit more Periscope, Facebook Live. But all of that, whatever we're doing, we're still going to make sure our YouTube channel receives the messages. I hope this blessed you because I know it truly blessed me. Let me pray for you. Father, we ask right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for those that will watch this. Father, we're asking that you bless that you help. Father, there's somebody in the waiting that is given is becoming um hopeless. There's a spirit of depression that's hitting some of your people. And Father, we pray that spirit of depression off of them. We pray a release, Lord God. Help them to know and to keep hope that you are still working, that you have not forgotten about them, that you are going to they're going to receive kindness and grace and mercy from you. They're going to receive favor. I pray your favor over your people right now in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, that you would help them to see how to be able to come out of the loader bar because some are still in loader bar not because you haven't been calling but they've been afraid to receive the message the word that you've been sending them to tell them to let go and to move out of some of the areas that they now find themselves in give them the strength today Lord God to release themselves to to renounce their affiliation with anything that's keeping them in loader bar so father we say thank you have your way help us encourage us and strengthen us for the journey in Jesus name we pray amen Amen. God bless you.